Oh, your victory. <laughs> Why can't I do that? Because you suck. <laughs> I got next though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. I'm not get getting it, get it, get it, get it. Yeah. Oh. Did you guys see that? The glorious yeah. victory? That was good. Man. Yeah. That was really good. No, no, no. no. The, the, the ghost. Welcome back, everybody, to Kirill Smashes Acting. I'm Kirill, actor, educator, cat enthusiast, and as you could tell by my multiple cat shirt, today is another installment of Acting Masterclass, where we get to watch what makes an actor great in a specific scene or performance. Today we're going to be focusing on one of my favorite actors, Karen Gillan. Many of you would know her from The Guardians of the Galaxy, but I fell in love with her work when I saw the movie Oculus years ago. Oculus is actually going to be the movie we're going to study today. A lot of you guys might not be into horror movies, but I implore you to go watch Oculus. Today we're going to be talking about one of the hardest jobs of an actor, making an exposition dump active and interesting. For those of you who have not seen Oculus, and I'm looking right at you, go watch it. Today we're going to be going over a scene early in the movie, so we won't be spoiling really what happens in the movie, so you'll still be able to watch it with fresh eyes if you watch this video first. Either way, make sure you see it. Mike Flanagan, who directed Oculus, also directed Hush and a little known show called The Haunting of Hill House. Fun fact, Jordan Christie, who played Arthur in the show, went to Brooklyn College a few years after I did, so he and I got to work together a little bit during our times there together. Really nice guy. I wish him so much success because he genuinely is a, an amazing person and a fantastic actor. Watch out for him. So today we're going to be going over one of the most difficult tasks an actor has, and that is how do we make exposition interesting to the audience and active on stage? I'm sure so many of you have heard that beginnings of movies are so boring because the exposition is boring and it's just dumped there. Oftentimes, lazy screenwriters will just create a plot device to give you all the information. But for you as an actor, even if you're doing exposition, you have a responsibility to the audience to make sure that you're active and alive on stage. Otherwise, why would the audience keep watching? So quick recap of Oculus for those of you who haven't seen it. 11 years before the start of the movie, a family was destroyed by the effects of a haunted mirror. Or were they? This movie deals with the aftermath of a tragedy. What happens psychologically when you're trying to break through it? How does the human mind try to deal with extreme tragedy? 11 years before the scene we're about to watch, this brother and sister combo went through an unspeakable tragedy. The father killed the mother, and then the young man that we're about to watch killed the father. He has only now gotten out of a mental institution. Now, 11 years later, Kaylee and Tim are reunited once again, and Kaylee is absolutely adamant that they must destroy this mirror. Mittens has decided she wants to play with the camera. Now, Tim, after 11 years of being under psychological care, is convinced that the haunted mirror wasn't real, and it's their family's broken psychological state that led to the events that destroyed them 11 years ago. So in this scene, we're not only going to get a complete exposition dump telling us all the history of this mirror so we could understand what's about to happen in the rest of the movie, but we also get to watch the dynamic between these two characters and how Kaylee's character being on her own for 11 years while Tim's character being under psychological care for 11 years are completely at odds, not only as to what happened 11 years ago, but what to do moving forward. So, now let's watch. And for those of you wondering why I moved, Mittens kept jumping in the chair behind me, so I had to. Notice how the actor here uses his body to tell you where everything is in the room. Yes, the camera shows you, but because he's moving through that world and showing you with his eyes, it kind of gives you a better idea of what the scale of the room is. I gotta get started. for a little bit. That question right there is at the heart of the conflict. Her objective with this exposition dump is to get him to stay. 
His objective is to get her out. There's where the conflict in the scene comes from. My name from. is Kaylee Ann Russell. I'm 23 years so old. So now the exposition dump begins. Alan Russell. Alan, of course, after his father. He's, he's 21 years Just old. Just the difference in the actor's physicality between her upright, calm, kind of straight ahead type of speech versus his shifty, non-direct speech and physicality tells you a lot about what their relationship dynamic is. That face he made was perfect. Everything she's doing right now as an actor, the way she's moving about the room, the way she's keeping her posture upright, the way her speech is very straightforward, not a lot of up and down in her pitch, tells you that she wants everyone in the room, people watching, since there's cameras, and most importantly her brother, actually also as well as the mirror, to know that she's in control. Her pace is very controlled. It's very straightforward. There's not a lot of wasted breath. Breathe in, speak. Breathe in, speak. While the character of Tim, he has a lot more sighing. He has a lot more throwaway breaths to tell the audience that he's not really on board with what she's doing. So here's the exposition. Her speech is still very controlled. Her movement is still very sparse and very direct. There's not a lot of curvy lines in anything she does. The way she picks up the phone, bam. She didn't look at it. She didn't take time to consider if she's going to pick it up. She grabbed it, saw it, took it. And then she quickly pushes it off. I'm nervous to be spending time with my recently unincarcerated brother with instructions to notify the authorities immediately if I do not answer the phone. The way she's delivering these lines signals strength. So in 1755, they signal confidence. And most importantly, they're there to tell the audience and to tell her brother what the truth is. This movie is all about what's real and what's imagined. That's the entire setup, and that's where the movie's going to go. So the way she's delivering the lines is all about telling you, the audience, and telling the other character in the room, this is the reality that we are facing. This is the truth. Ballroom in Atlanta. Later that year, Robert Clancy is photographed by a local newspaper, and uh, well, he's dropped a few pounds. His outfit was printed. A few it's a really smart device using these cameras. It allows he her to look the, the audience in the eye, in March the which is rarely something you can do in a movie that, that doesn't break the fourth wall like so Deadpool. This in terms of the century New England. The next case of note is Mary O'Connor, 1904. She hung the mirror in her private bathroom. Two weeks later, her niece Beatrice finds Mary dead in the bathtub. Now, she almost never breaks this pace, except when she's looking at her brother. Pay attention to the way she does an aside right here. Her rhythm changed. She gave herself time to pause and to see how the other character responds to what she's doing. Found the children drowned in a locked system. So even though she's being Alice kind of a bulldozer in this scene, she still takes time to observe the other character and to see if her tactics are working to get her objective, which is of course to keep him here. They find her just as she's going to work on her skull. Her right arm, though, is completely unharmed. Now, right about now, the intensity of her speech starts to grow. Alice later says she believed she was tucking the children There's into their beds to conceal them in the One of her only pauses. She never recovers from her injuries, and oh, the family kept several dogs at the farm including an Australian shepherd for the children. This is a beautiful moment. Her childhood dog goes by and her physicality drops. There goes all of that straightforwardness and power out the window and everything is revealed for what she really feels inside. 
Who exactly are you talking to? This is a beautiful shot. Notice how she's no longer straight up. All the people who stare. The way she has to sit to talk Pointed. to her brother creates two curves. So it changes. So uh, it changes down. the power dynamic in the scene. I'll get your murderer. She's no longer that kind of powerful, Kaylee, we in kids. charge leader. She's now the young story, so girl who misses her brother. Was a murderer. He was. He was a sick man who tortured and killed our. And there, she straightened up a little bit. And then curved her head crazy. down. What are you like? You're not allowed to talk about him that way. Tobin Cap, 1955. Starved to death in his own bedroom. The mayor was hung over his dresser. Now, after that moment, moment her words start California. to intensify even the mayor more. Hangs in the lobby of the Hillcrest Bank in San She's Diego. starting to move faster because, teller, because she knows that she has to make sure that she keeps him in this room. Line. So she won't give him a chance to speak. She will make sure that she just in her nice speaks standard, right through what his objection is right there. And a pair of bloody pliers. Everything you know, becomes there's quick. A huge difference between causation and correlation. I know the difference. Thank you. Okay, then in 2001, Mom and Dad bought that new couch. Same year, Grandpa had a heart attack, Robbie Shaw's got hit by a car, and our cat ran away. How much of that do you blame on that couch? Can I get back to this now? Sure, but let's get to it, Kaylee. Let's talk about why we're really here. 2002. The last her glass Even in this aside, she's Lundle. much more straightforward than she that was when she was talking to her brother Husband earlier in the scene. Her Father tactics to, to dismiss, two weeks of its arrival, Marie suffers an intense psychological breakdown, to bulldoze, and is tortured and murdered in a family home. By whom? By her husband. And to overpower say the police reports and her husband was shot to death by her own son right in front of her daughter I intend to prove that none of the people I've just described were responsible for their actions Alan Russell was and not a murderer he was a slightly one of many as it turns out victims winning. of the supernatural force that resides in that mirror so why don't we just end it right now and smash the goddamn thing they don't remember you. Remember what? Please, smash it. Very smart screenwriting right there. Okay. She lets her face soften a little bit because she realizes that her tactics are getting to her brother. She's still pretty powerful physically well, compared to him in the scene. Happens to people who look like See how her eyes dart a little bit? That gives the clue to the audience Mind that her brother just put down the bar control. stool. And once that belief's taken root, the mind she takes his information and forces of speech when that looking into the mirror, showing the audience that there's some kind of hyp hypnotic power that How many thousands has. of records did you have to pour through to find 12 or 13 that support your case? Why did you put the stool down? Because I'm trying to have a conversation with you. Uh -huh. Only one person I know of was ever documented trying to break the mirror. Oliver Jeffries, 1971, a teacher in Manhattan's Duhame Academy where the mayor hung the central lecture hall. This you hall. can tell is clearly morning, for exposition the mirror, because the fireplace this, shouting about how it needed to be destroyed, uh, but he never struck a blow. According death students, that she brings up for a is out of chronological order. And into traffic. Why would she skip it otherwise? It's clearly a bit convenient for a much in. smarter film just than most. You know why I didn't smash the mirror, Kaylee? Besides you getting fired or charged with destruction of property, it isn't mine to break. No one can break your delusion for you. You have to do it yourself. Which leads me to my final precaution. You're looking at a 20 pound Danforth anchor. Now her Another speech 20 is pounds out of his barbells attached to a modified when ballast rail and spring brother. pin lock connected to a mechanical kitchen timer. No electricity, which is important, and we're about 10 seconds away. The timer is not manually reset every 30 minutes. That is if no one is here to stop it. Okay. 
she's shielding him. Marigold's right there. Metaphorically protecting him. The only him. thing to prevent that from happening again is our continued survival. You know why we don't have to wait for the come out of play? Because we got a load of You can tell in the small smiles. I expect it'll be easier to defend. The character itself. thinks she's winning this. scene was about convincing him that everything that she's put in makes them more powerful than the mirror hence she had to be more powerful than him to keep him in the room we're actually going to stop right there now if i show you more of this scene it gives away so much about the rest of the movie that i really don't want to keep going but here's what i want you to think about and take from that to make this exposition dump interesting the actor tied the word she was saying, slash the exposition, with her objective, which was keeping her brother in the room. She created a list of what had happened with this mirror, and each part of the list became more and more important than the part before. She started off in a straight kind of posture to show control. Her speech was straightforward. The cadence was simple yet understandable and then she raised the intensity of it based on what was happening in the room and how her brother was reacting to it the trap there is to either make it all so huge that the audience gets tired of listening to something too intense or making the exposition so one note that the audience gets bored because nothing's happening by creating that dynamic between her and her brother and by creating that objective and placing it in the room and making it extremely personal, the screenwriter and the actor were able to make this exposition dump not just watchable, but really a work of art. It was alive, it was honest, and it had stakes. Her tactics were really clear. Her obstacles both had to do with the brother she was talking to and the danger of the mirror behind her because she knows that this mirror could literally lead to their death. If you want to see where the rest of the scene goes, please go get this movie. You will not be disappointed. It is by far one of the smartest and best horror movies you're going to find made by one of the best horror movie directors we have. Watch Oculus. Watch Gerald's Game. Watch The Haunting of Hill House. I promise you'll enjoy all of them. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and tell me in the comments what you want me to cover next. I'm happy to go over any kind of books or movies, anything about acting, as long as you guys will enjoy it. Say goodnight, Mittens. Good night, Mittens. She bit me. If anyone's wondering why I haven't had other cats featured in my videos since I put Mittens on, she is currently one of my fosters staying in the film room, and she doesn't get along with cats too well. But she loves people and dogs, so hopefully we'll find her forever home soon. Pause crossed.